Sit down, strap in, hang on. You're listening to the God Stories Radio podcast. www.godstoriesradio.com. edition of God Stories Radio. This is session 217. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. What's going on, guys? Thursday night. Thursday night. Yeah. Yay, we made right it here. to yeah. another one. Yes, we did. Yeah, I can't wait. I count the minutes. <laughs> well, your time has arrived. Yes, yes it, it has. has. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thursday night. You betcha. A time to look forward to. Ooh. Especially for Mike today. I know it, right? <laughs> Mike got a major Tell us, blessing. Mikey. Tell us what you won. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, Mike. It's no ordinary anything. pickup. It's <laughs> a Dodge. It's a Dodge Ram. <laughs> Mikey is Ram tough. <laughs> <laughs> After eight years. You That's know, awesome. I'm so happy for you, Mikey. I, I can't stand it. I really, uh, you deserve it. And yes. it is so nice to see that kind of a blessing uh-huh eight years driving god's car yeah amen all right fantastic so you were able to trade that in oh no no he still oh, no. got it i oh, still have it okay. oh no i the guy that gave me that uh, car eight plus years ago mm-hmm. or almost eight years ago be november i promised him that i would pass it for it when it comes time that whoever's yep. in my circle at the time will get it that's awesome. So that's what I'm going to do. And you had somebody picked out for that too, right? I do. That's fantastic. So we'll see. Wonderful. Yes, it is. It really is. It it's is. It's so it, nice to see those things come to fruition. Uh-huh. It's been, awesome. been looking at thousands of trucks for the past couple months. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, no easy feat. No, trying to find the, the right one, the right deal. At the right time. Mm-hmm. And today was it. Yay. Well, we're so happy for you. Yes, we are so happy for you, Mikey. That is awesome. I'm happy for me, too. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> I bet you are. Uh, man, it's going to be great, man. One day, you know, it's nice to just get in a car and put the key in and know it's not going to explode. <laughs> well, my car has been pretty good. Your car has been excellent. It, it Actually, was my car that I was uh Junior drove talking. it drove it from Orlando and he says, What are you doing driving around in that death trap? I says, What are you talking about? He says, Well the when you put the brakes on the wheels wobble a little bit. I says, That's been doing that for years. I says, I bet you have good AC. He says, Oh, your AC is excellent. Yes it is. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. Mikey and I have uh blessing cars two years apart. His was a Toya uh Corolla, right? Mm-hmm. And then mine's a Camry. Mine was a 99. And yours mine's is what? a 99. An, oh, same year. Yes. Well, isn't that like the father? And same color. Same color. <laughs> and my AC rocks. Oh, it does. It really does. <laughs> I am so thankful you have no idea. Uh, especially living in Florida. Uh-huh. But now I can use the sunroof that I have in this truck. I know it. I know that was a desire of yours. It and was. And you got it. God gave you the desires of your heart. He knows them. And I went there not even believe because it didn't advertise that particular feature. It didn't. But I went to look for it. And as soon as I opened a door and I saw the, okay, it's got a sunroof. It's Father mine. wanted to surprise you. Yeah, he did. That was actually a, a surprise. Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Babe, we got some shout outs tonight. We, we do. We do. Yes. All right. At one Facebook like. Fantastic. And she's actually going to be a future guest of ours. So I want to say thank you to Jennifer Gendron. 
Jennifer Thank Gendron. you, Jennifer. Wow, yes. fantastic. She's going to be here in two weeks. You, you know, I've been seeing Bob at the church. Yep, you know, both of them. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I and talked to Bob too. about being a, being a part of the uh, tech team, and he said, you know what? I'll do it. That's awesome. How about that? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I love Maybe Bob. Yeah, yeah, he's a good he's guy. He's awesome. He is great. And, uh, well, thank you. Thank you for liking us. Saving yes, me from that you. awkward moment. Yes, and <laughs> anyone else out there who has not liked this yet on Facebook, please do so from wherever you are. Yeah, thank you so much. Any countries? No countries. Well, we had a we had a plethora well, a couple we have, of weeks we're ago. We're at 102. So 102. I tell you, we always we kind of wondered when we were going to crack 100. <laughs> but then again, we always wondered when we were going to crack 60. Or 50. Or 50. Uh-huh. So, God, Lord's just... It just blows my mind. It just doesn't get old to see God move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Indeed. Well, who do we got tonight, babe? Well, we've actually had the privilege of having tonight's guests uh, visit us twice. Yeah. Because she was here a few sessions back when her mom gave her testimony. So her mom was session 213. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, so I'm really happy to welcome um, Miss Michelle Williams to the show. She's a former social worker and a proud USPS worker now. And uh, she's uh, been very dedicated to the choir and praise team at her church. So um, we're delighted to have her come here and share her testimony in person. So welcome and thanks for bringing mom. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Michelle for coming. We, we so appreciate you saying yes. And we, hopefully we didn't pressure you too bad last time you were here. <laughs> Glad to be no here. No pressure. We got mama son back there. Uh huh. <laughs> She's going to be praising it up yep. during the testimony. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> well, feel free to just jump right into yeah. it. You know, tell us like, you know, where you're from and, you know, where you were born and stuff like what that. What post office do you work at? Claremont Post Office. Is that? Oh, friendly face. Yay. Claremont Annex. Claremont Annex. On Sisters Tower Boulevard. Oh, Sisters Tower. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. All they, right. I'm going to roll up in there and see you. Yes. Get they, some stamps. As as a city carrier assistant at New, um, they also send me to work in other offices like Winter Garden and Groveland, Okoe. I've even worked in Howie in the Hills. Okay. So I'm getting a lot of experience. That's for sure. That's fantastic. So is the one by the Citrus Tower like an actual post office location or is it like where they just sort mail? and? Yes, it's more like the warehouse where they sort the mail, receive the packages, and then all of us have our um, LLVs, the trucks that we drive out to mm-hmm. the neighborhoods to mm-hmm. deliver the mail. So it's not like the place where you would go and buy the stamps. Right. That one is uh, downtown. On That's Mineola. what I thought. I didn't yeah. think that there was any other one, but I was running the chance that maybe there would be a new discovery of a new post office. <laughs> Uh-huh. I was going to be excited. Yes, I love working outdoors because I spent so many years as a social worker working inside an, mm-hmm. of an office and air conditioning. Yeah. But I've always loved helping people, helping families and helping children mm-hmm. and trying to give them a sense of hope. Because um, most of the people I worked with as a social worker were in the low income bracket, mm-hmm. um, receiving like assistance, food stamps, Medicaid, stuff like that. And they had a program where they helped them to become more self-sufficient. So they, um, we look at if they have any barriers to employment, and then we help them to get um, hooked to the right services. Because we had like contracts with other agencies that would help people if they needed to get their GED or if they needed to learn a certain skill in order to start mm-hmm. working and making money for their family. Mm-hmm. And if they needed child care assistance or transportation assistance, <clears throat> bus tokens or car repair I was so glad we had something to offer them. Do you see like a correlation between Mm -hmm. like um, families because they're low income, they end up falling into certain cracks as far as like, because I think for most people, especially with their kids, Uh they want to give their kids everything that they can, Mm -hmm. you know, but I know just from personal experience how demanding it is just to take care of one. Yes. You know, and then you combine that with, uh, because my kids were like 10 years apart, 
but like a lot of people have their kids like a few years apart That's and true. then it's like it's even harder for them because mm -hmm. they have to make the same money stretch out multiple times mm -hmm. That's and true. the things that you can offer them become less and less mm -hmm. if you've got to parcel it out right i remember there were gift giveaways for the children too like mm -hmm. during christmas because we would get people that would donate like charities to make sure that the kids had what they need even like for the school time the they would have a uh get together where they would give away backpacks and mm -hmm. school supplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of other agencies that worked with us to help us be able to um, reach out to the mm -hmm. community. And so they wouldn't feel like, you know, they couldn't afford certain basic things, you know, so that their basic needs were met. Mm -hmm. So that was really good. It made me feel good to be able to offer them something so they don't feel like nobody cares mm -hmm. yeah it's going to be really michelle hard. hats off to you because it takes a special person to do what you do oh absolutely mm -hmm. you know to really care mm -hmm. because they're they're not all the time the nicest people you know mm -hmm. no because yeah. look where they are i know yes. you know it takes a special person and of course you uh, you know the king of kings so you're grounded on the solid foundation so you can yes. just smile and I'll pray for you and put you mm -hmm. on the list right now. And sometimes they just needed a listening ear. Like mm -hmm. someone, mm -hmm. like you said, would be frustrated and angry because some other social worker or caseworker was mean to them, mm -hmm. you know, and they would tell me that they would say, well, this other worker I had was so mean and they didn't try to help me. And thank you for taking the time to help me and let me know about these resources. Yeah. I so I was like glad to just be there for them and show them that someone does care, you mm -hmm. know, when and I, respects them too. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. right. To be so, non judgmental, you right. know, because there's a lot of, you know, single moms sure. a lot and a few single mm -hmm. dads. Yeah. And that's one thing I learned. It's like, I don't know how they got in that situation. Mm -hmm. And, and I had, and I, it helped me relate to other people and realize everyone didn't grow up the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up with two parents, mother and father mm -hmm. in Toledo, Ohio. And I got an education because my parents got saved when they were in their twenties. Mm -hmm. So they encouraged me to get saved at an early age, like mm -hmm. around 11, 11 and a half years old. Plus they made sure we were involved in church. Like we'd go to Sunday school and learn more about the Bible and how to apply it to our lives even as children. Mm -hmm. So I had like a really wholesome upbringing and I learned from going to college. I studied in psychology. So I got a bachelor's in psychology and I also went and got a master's in guidance and counseling mm -hmm. so that I could relate to people and, and be sensitive to cultural diversity. Mm -hmm. Can I just say, I thank God for people like you because Amen to that. Um, it's a gift. we have people um, in a similar profession at my son's public school mm -hmm. in high school who are guidance and, you know, peer counselors and so forth. But if they didn't do what they did, Michelle, I don't think that we'd be able to do mainstream school mm -hmm. because they actually take the time to care and, mm -hmm. you know, they consider where they're placing your child. They try to build your child towards success and get them into yes. the right types of classrooms so that mm -hmm. your child can actually succeed. Yes. I'm just blown away and amazed, you know, by what they are willing to do and how much they're willing to help and how much they just truly care. That's right. Because um, there are some some parents, they like what I learned from working for, for Head Start. Like in Ohio, I worked for the um, social services department. And then when I moved here initially in 2008, I worked for Head Start. And it's like I learned even in Ohio, some parents might have like addiction issues mm -hmm. Like um, maybe drugs or alcohol, so they may not be as focused on being the best parent they can yeah. be because they first have to get their own issues taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I was so glad to find out there were professional counselors, licensed counselors, where we could say, okay, if this is a barrier to your employment, we can help you get professional help where I'm not, you know, a, a licensed counselor on that level, but we can refer you to that service. And then some of them were victims of domestic violence. It's like finding out what people went through. It just made me more compassionate. Mm -hmm. Some of them had gotten injured on the job, so they were on disability. They didn't want to be on the system, the mm -hmm. welfare system, but they had to have some source of income until they could get on their feet. Mm -hmm. So it's like finding all of that out, it's just... 
made me have more of a heart to say, okay, these are the resources we can help you with. Um, the, the insurance you have through the welfare department, the Medicaid is going to pay. You don't have to worry about paying out of pocket. And if there were kids with behavior problems, of course, we had a few <laughs> because maybe their parents didn't train them at home mm -hmm. or maybe they were born with drugs or alcohol in their system right. from their parents. So they might be hyperactive. Mm -hmm. And then some of them were acting out because of what they saw at home. Mm -hmm. They may have been abused or molested. It was just some serious stuff. Sometimes that was going on where sometimes the kids would um, attack other children. <laughs> I saw some of everything. Mm -hmm. I bet you and, have. And I think they even called the police on one of the children. You ever just go home but, rattled? You know, yeah, just absolutely rattled? Yeah. and it, Or <sighs> we they call the police because parents were fighting over custody of children. Mm -hmm. So, and then they told me to hide the child. Don't tell the parent that they're here. Because according to the law, I think one, you know, they say which parents allowed to take the child. So right. we had to be really careful about who could pick up the kids mm -hmm. and who, who could watch over the kids and who was supposed to be there if the parent wasn't available. It was very, it was stressful. I'll just be honest with mm -hmm. you. And, and if there were, <laughs> but it was rewarding at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And I remember this one child who he was probably four or five years old in preschool in mm -hmm. Head Start. Mm -hmm. He really touched my heart. I, I saw him, you know, acting out. He was punching another child and he had this really mean look on his face. It looked like he was reliving something he saw mm -hmm. and come to find out his parents were drug users. And I think they told me that his father, I think, you know, abused his mom. So and they were constantly moving from one like relative's house to another. And I remember like they told me the, the teacher didn't want him in the classroom anymore because she tried to get him to stop hitting the other children and he really wouldn't listen to her. So I had an office, of course, as a social worker because I have caseloads and paperwork and we do the process of signing the kids up and everything. So she's like, can you take them in your office for a, for a little bit until we can call one of his parents or relatives to come get him? Because mm -hmm. if the children are like out of control, they, they can't let them stay in there and hit other kids. Mm -hmm. So when he found out he was going to have to leave the classroom, he didn't want to go. So he was like laying on the floor, having a fit, crying. And he kept yelling his mother's name, mom, 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 like he was reliving something. Mm -hmm. And I figured it was some kind of traumatic event must have happened in his life. So I just kind of let him lay on the floor in front of the classroom door. And I kind of petted him and told him, I'm right here. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to punish you. You know, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And I just let him, you know, cry for a little while. And then when he realized I wasn't there to put him on punishment or anything, then he listened to me. He was very articulate, very Aww. intelligent. Mm -hmm. And they had these iPads they used for the kids to learn. And as a background with singing, mm -hmm. I was singing to him the little uh, songs and everything on the iPad, and he loved it. Mm -hmm. And then he began to tell me, open up and tell me about his family. And he mm -hmm. could talk really well. I was like, this child is so intelligent. Mm -hmm. But if you would just go by how he acted at first, you would never know it. Right. right. Nope. And and it's like he had to have, you know, the um, counselors that come in for kids with behavior issues and mm -hmm. emotional issues. Mm -hmm. He got one of those counselors who came in and helped him because he absolutely needed help. Mm -hmm. You know, but he was so intelligent. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they have to have patience with these kids. Don't mm -hmm. label them. Mm -hmm. But you have to, like, give them a chance and just show them that you care. I know that's one of been one of the most important things to me with my children, because both of them had some learning different disabilities but you know mm -hmm. one has a more significant learning disability than the other okay so um and you know i i wasn't a, a person who you know was on drugs or was alcoholic you know mm -hmm. or anything like that mm -hmm. i just happened to have um I, my first son was really hyperactive and my second son was, um, had just learning disabilities there. It's like a processing disorder where mm -hmm. he has problems with writing and, um, with doing things that have multiple steps in them. And, you know, it's so hard because it's like you just don't know where to turn when mm -hmm. your kids have those issues um, and you're trying to benchmark them because he was my only my second child. I didn't have any other frame of reference other than 
parenting my first child. So I kept comparing his milestones to the next child, you know, saying, mm-hmm. oh, he should be doing this by this time and doing oh, this yes. by this time, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't know if you have any advice for people that struggle with those same sort of things because it's sort of like you know your heart is you just so unsure what to do you know you don't know whether or not you should be doing something or Mm -hmm. what you should notice and and when you should try to get them some kind of help and it's really confusing yes they did give us a basic milestone like chart of what each child should be able to do at a certain age or at a certain level. Mm -hmm. The first step was to get the child evaluated because each child is an individual. Mm -hmm. So you can't compare them to another child in the family because they all have a different level of learning and some of them have different styles of learning. Mm -hmm. So what works with one might not work with the other Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they're very individual, individual and that's what I appreciated about the counselors that, you know, they work with the kids while they were in the school. So they would come out of the classroom maybe for an hour and work with the um, counselor and they would find out what level of learning they were at. They would have, a, you know, different ways they would test them mm-hmm. and then they would figure out, OK, are they behind in this area, math, reading and how can we catch them up? And then they would work with the parents and let them know what kinds of homework exercises they could do at home to help the child to catch up. So it was really, really nice. It -hmm. was like personalized for each child, like a plan of how they were going to help the child learn and get on the level they needed to be on Mm -hmm. in order to um, reach all those milestones. Mm -hmm. So that's why I liked working with the kids and the families because I found it to be rewarding. It's just sometimes if we had like a vacant caseload, (laughs) that's when it would get to be too much like they would pile up whoever's there they just pile it on you Mm -hmm. or sometimes like if somebody's absent I would get like their clients so it's like after doing it for 15 to 20 years I'm like okay I'm getting older my stress levels are different and Mm -hmm. it it takes longer for me to recuperate Mm -hmm. and then like you said I would take things home with me sometimes and think about it and I you know have to release it and and pray and I would and I would think okay I'm gonna retire maybe in my 60s or 70s I'm older can I handle this until I'm 60 or 70 Mm -hmm. years old Mm -hmm. because I'm like I don't recuperate as quickly I have to rest longer in my 20s I can recuperate fast but when you get 30s and 40s it's different Mm -hmm. so I decided I should switch careers for my health Mm -hmm. I was like I've done all I can. I used my degrees to help people and everything I learned in school. And I was like, okay, it's time for me to change careers. And I would freeze in in the office. I would feel too cold (laughs) from the air conditioning. (laughs) I was like, do I want to do this? Freeze. I think I even caught a cold because they would keep it so cold in there. It felt like a freezer. Hmm. I guess (laughs) it kills germs. I don't know. (laughs) Kind of like hospital cold, you know? Uh Uh-huh. So I was like, well, I think I should switch to something I think I could handle and retire (laughs) from and enjoy. And I had heard a lot of people who work for the United States Postal Service were in professions, professional careers and um, some Army veterans. So I was like, oh, I'd love to work outside, especially like in Ohio was cold and icy. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a good time to work outside there. But once we moved to Florida, it's like, wow, it's warm most of the time, mostly all year round. So I was like, this be perfect place to be working outdoors. Right. So I love I love my new job. And there are people that are in their 60s that are still working there. You know, so I'm like, well, this I think would be something I could handle up till retirement. So is that still like um, I don't know. You have to forgive my ignorance, but is social when you're a social worker, are you um, an employee of the government? I believe. Yes. Okay. From what I understand. The federal government or. When I worked State. for Head Start, it was under Orange County government. Oh, so it was under, okay, uh-huh. okay county government then. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so now you're a federal employee. So did yes. things change up for you a little? You mean like the way they do benefits and stuff? Yeah. Or? It did change. Okay. From what I understand, it's like a different source but they have very good benefits Mm -hmm. and that was the other thing it's like i still need to have medical insurance and those basic things you know so i love my job i love all the people that i work with there is multicultural people that work for the united states postal service Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. it's more physical 
and I wanted to stay in shape Mm because I do Zumba class, Mm -hmm. but I don't get to go every day. Like I almost used to go every day, (laughs) every evening. But sometimes I'm so tired (laughs) from working for the postal service. Zumba's no joke. Yeah, Yeah, I've done Zumba before. (laughs) I love it. I couldn't walk. We had (laughs) a couple of days. We had a Zumba instructor on here. Ages ago. Oh yeah, Maca Macalonis. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So now I do Zumba. I say maybe two or three times a week because of like the physical labor of the post office and loading the truck and the packages and delivering that mail and walking and it's like I'm getting exercise mm-hmm. even if I don't go to Zumba because mm-hmm. I actually lost weight after I started working for the post office. Mm-hmm. I probably lost. I'd say maybe 15, 15, maybe 20 pounds Wow! (laughs) because of being out and sweating and drinking Mm -hmm. a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to stay in shape. So I was like, this is good. (laughs) 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 Well, we've kind of got your occupation covered, Michelle. (laughs) Take us back to when uh, the Lord found you. Yes, I was around 11, 11 and a half. And actually, the way I realized God was real and that it made a difference to pray and have a prayer life and to study the Bible, I watched my mother because okay. uh, she would be in the living room praying and I would peek from the stairwell and I would see she would look stressful initially, like she was giving her cares to God and she'd cry. And then by the time she got through praying, her countenance looked so peaceful and it would have like a glow and it made me believe God is real. And if I pray to God and talk to him about my problems and my issues, he'll help me to have that peace that I saw on my mother's face. Mm -hmm. And of course, my parents had us go to Sunday school and and attend church. So it's like I realized God was really real by watching my mom, to be honest. That's what made me really think, hey, I need to have a personal relationship with God. I don't need to just know about him. But I need to know him for myself. Mm -hmm. So that's when I got serious when I was about 11, 11 and a half. And as a result of getting saved at such a young age, it helped me go through the peer pressure process more simply. Of course, I had some opposition because our church was a Church of God in Christ Pentecostal, where back then, I think that was in the 80s or 90s when I was a teenager. Yeah. They uh, we they didn't believe in wearing pants, so I was wearing like skirts and dresses to church most mm-hmm. of the time. And yep. some of the younger, some of the other girls would would ask me, "Why don't you wear pants?" And I would tell them it's because my church tradition teaches us to wear skirts or or dresses or kulaks. And the main people I had opposition from were some of the girls who were more like on the loose side. Mm-hmm. And do you have a boyfriend? How come you don't have a boyfriend? You know, mm-hmm. they would they were just kind of trying to pick on me. So it's like I had to learn how to stand up for myself and speak up. And I had to show that I wasn't afraid, Mm -hmm. you know, because they they just thought they could intimidate me. Mm -hmm. And they were going around the school telling people they were going to beat me up after school to scare me. And so I told the principal about it and he dealt with it. There you go. So you don't know my daddy. Yeah. (laughs) But that I remember that was just one of the worst times I had in high school. I think I was maybe 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. And one of the girls that was part of that was two girls. I met the one girl and I helped her because she came to our classroom late. I think it was a chemistry science class. So the teacher asked me to help her catch up on everything. And then when she met her, this other girl who didn't like me. It's like she took on the other girl's attitude, even though I had been nice to her. Mm-hmm. So they, it's like the two of them together would try to work on me and be mean. Mm-hmm. But when I got the one girl by herself that I had been kind to and helped her with the um, class and the homework and everything, it's like I just found out I had to let her know I wasn't afraid and that I wasn't intimidated. And that's what my father said. He said, you have to stand up to that girl and look her eyeball to eyeball. And let her know you're not intimidated, you're not afraid, and that, you know, if you have to fight, you fight. That's what my father told me. Mm -hmm. You know, if if she attacks you or something, he said you will have to fight at some point. You know, and of course, go and get help and let the uh, principals and so forth know, but you can't just act like, you know, you're cowering. Mm -hmm. And and I had to stand up to her. I remember I walked up to her locker and I was like, why are you going around telling people you're going to beat me up and that you don't like me? You know, and she was like shocked, like because instead of me just being nice and quiet, and minding my own business, I actually confronted her like my father said and let her know I wasn't afraid. 
And she was like, I just don't like you. And I told her, I don't like you either. (laughs) And it's like, I, from that point on, she, she was back. She backed off. She wasn't ugly anymore. If I saw her, I say hi. And and she say hi, you know? So it's like, there's really no payoff if they can't rattle you. Yeah. Right. You know? Uh, Right. uh So it's like, we kept our distance from each other, but I just had to show her I wasn't afraid. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then she respected me more instead of me just, you know, cowering. So. Uh huh. Kids are mean. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. They can be mean. Yeah, but you know, Christians also kind of have that persona, you know, mm-hmm. that they just just cower. You know, we're supposed to turn the other cheek, but nobody mm-hmm. said. When I was first saved, that's what I thought. I was just either. supposed to lay down on the car on the ground and let people walk all over me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for a year, I did that until you Father bet. showed me otherwise. Yep, you bet. Yep, it doesn't say be a doormat. No. no. And of course, I had to forgive. You know, that's important because the Bible says if we don't forgive, then God won't forgive our sins or answer our prayers. That's mm-hmm. right. So it's like no matter, you know, what I went through, I, I learned to forgive people who were mean, you know, or who were acting like bullies. And... One scripture that always stayed with me is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You know it. Lean, not, Lean all. not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he right. shall okay. direct thy path. And my parents were saying, you have to include God in everything. Mm-hmm. Every little thing. You ask God for direction. Mm-hmm. Even ask him about what career you should do. Mm-hmm. And I did. I prayed and I asked God to lead me about my career choices. And it's like every time we do things God's way and let him lead, he makes sure that we're successful. Mm-hmm. And I noticed everything that I would do, as long as I acknowledge God and asked him for wisdom to open up my understanding, to show me how to help people with their individual mm-hmm. needs, even as a a uh, worker for the post office there's like elderly people who are out there who might ask me questions need help there was this one man who was uh in something like a walker and he and he fell over well and wow. when i right when i came to his house to put the mail in the mailbox he had fallen over on the sidewalk oh, what on a the ground hmm. yeah well, and his <laughs> it wasn't. And his wife. Yeah, we know. Both of them were elderly, probably 60s, 70s, maybe older. And his wife was like, oh, my God, I can't get my husband up. He's on the ground and he can't get up. And I and I took my time. They taught us how to lift properly, you know, mm-hmm. with the post office, because mm-hmm. sometimes uh, yeah. we have big packages mm-hmm. and how you don't mess up your back. Mm-hmm. And this man, he wasn't that light, but he wasn't real heavy either. So I had to literally use my strength to pick him up and to pull his chair up, wipe the dirt and the leaves off of him and push him all the way back up his driveway to his door because mm-hmm. his uh, wife was about to call 911. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can help him. You know, it's it's not too much you know, for you to ask. Because it was like, I could tell it was serious. Because she's like, oh, my God, can you help me? My husband fell over and he can't get up. And and I was jumped out that truck and helped him right away. Aww. You know, so I was glad to help him. Mm-hmm. That's I, the background that you went and through. And you just yeah. showed up in the nick of time. Yeah. 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 But I think eventually yeah, they ended up selling their house because I guess he couldn't handle living at home anymore because mm-hmm. of his condition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's hard. That'll yeah. give you a high you just can't. You know, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. When, you, uh-huh. when the Lord sets that up, yep. Yes. God, she's Ooh. like, "Thank you, yep. thank you." He's going awesome. to wait to see what you were going to do. Amen. Yep. I was glad to help, and I know God put that in me to to be helpful. You know, so it's even when we went on a cruise. Oh, what? Talking. Oh, when we went on a cruise ship to to um, Jamaica to Dun River Falls. We decided to climb the falls, but my mother didn't want to, mm-hmm. but I wanted to. So there was this little boy, I think he was five to seven years old, and his and he his mother wanted him to climb the falls too, and you know they're slippery. Mm-hmm. So I helped because I was used to working with kids from Head Start, and we all were holding hands to help, you know, pull each other up on the little uh, rocks and stuff that mm-hmm. are slippery. So I, it was just like it came natural to me to help him, mm-hmm. you know, and to mm-hmm. push him forward and make sure he didn't fall when he was on the falls climbing you know as a child and his mom was like thank you so much for helping me and helping him up you know it's so i know god put that in me that caring where if i see a need mm-hmm. i just jump right into the role like i mm-hmm. said before it's a gift yeah it yeah. sure is It is. Mm-hmm. it's a gift just to be in the profession that she was in for so long mm-hmm. yeah. just having 
sincere compassion Absolutely. and not just punching a clock. You know? mm-hmm. And I think the thing that strikes me is that the same people that gave her a bad time in her youth for her, um, you know, respect and, uh, you know, to the standards of her church at that time and so forth, you know, about wearing what she mm-hmm. was wearing and, and maybe just, being a good person in general, you know, are probably the same types of people that you ended up helping later on in the system. Oh, yes. There's a Joseph story for you. That's yeah. true. Look what he did at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He helped the very right. brothers that threw him in the pit. Yep. That's, right. that's just amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's old school Church of God, too. They probably had like six hour services or something like that. We did. I, I know. I, I, I would remember that, man. It'd be, I'd be starving. It'd be two in the afternoon. They're on the first praise chorus, you know? We had long services. Oh, yeah. They were long. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad that the church is more progressive now and not so old fashioned. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Mama's chuckling in over there in the yeah. corner. She's make, <laughs> making my night. Uh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. is there anything else you'd what like else to share What else can you tell us, us, Michelle? You just, uh, you talk so fluently, like it's just effortless. So I think we could <laughs> sit here all night. I got coffee. We can do it. <laughs> no. We're not burning any remember, tape or Remember anything. that uh, guest we had a little while ago over the phone that, he paused a little bit and then said something, and I was, oh, I did this too. And then, oh, yeah, I did that too. Oh, yeah, I remember her. <laughs> yeah. She was funny. Yeah. She was funny. <laughs> and he just kept on going. And kept on going. She every, had all these talents. Like the Energizer all these bunny. little talents, yeah. Yeah. So, what else can you tell us about Michelle that uh, is just going to bless somebody? Well, I love to travel. I'd say it's important to be Amen balanced to that. and to have a. Uh, a full life. Preach that balance. So, so yeah. it's like um, one one guy, uh, Jonathan McReynolds, has a song about making room for God and not putting anything before God and putting God first. So it's like every morning, I usually wake up around, I think, 6, 6.30. So I go ahead and have my prayer time and try the Bible study. Sometimes me and my mom will do one together later in the evening. But I realize it's very important to acknowledge God at the beginning, at the, in the morning. Cause the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he's near. And there's a scripture about seeking God early in the morning at the beginning of the day. Mm-hmm. So he can lead us all throughout the day because he knows what's out there and he protects us from so many things we're not even aware of. Mm-hmm. Even, you know, driving a mail truck, I have to be aware of how p- other people are driving around me mm-hmm. and of course have to be protective about making sure the truck is locked when I'm going in and out delivering things to people. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I also have to have a life outside of church, you know? So me and my mom, we love traveling. We do like cruise ship travel most of the time. And one of my best vacations was when we went on a like two week, 13 night Holy land cruise. Oh, wow. Where Ooh, we, man. we flew from, it was Holy Land Cruise, because they try to cover all the places in the Bible mm-hmm. where Jesus and the disciples oh, went. Wow. So they, we started in Rome, Italy. We had to fly there to get on the ship. Mm-hmm. And it was the Celebrity Cruise Line. Mm, okay. And at the time, I think the ship was only a year old, the Celebrity Equinox. Mm-hmm. And from there, we went to Athens, Greece. And we went to Israel, two parts of Israel. And wow. they showed us like where Jesus' tomb was and where he... uh I can't remember the Garden all of, of Gethsemane, Garden of Gethsemane, mm-hmm. the Via della Rosa, where he walked with the cross, mm-hmm. and, the, and they had the place where he was in jail. Mm-hmm. It was so interesting, but it was like so crowded too. Mm-hmm. We need to go back to finish seeing everything. Yeah. yeah, and this cruise even went to Egypt, and Egypt was like, wow. We saw the pyramids. Uh-huh. We saw King Tut's treasures that were preserved. Right. And now they're building a new museum there, mm-hmm. a bigger museum where they said they could put more of his treasures on display that they didn't have enough space to put on display before. Right. Wow. So it's like now I'm excited about going back and finishing seeing the things that I didn't finish seeing. Mm-hmm. And that was 2010. Mm-hmm. And the family's also talking about taking a cruise or a trip to Kenya. Is it Kenya, Ooh. Africa? Whoa, nice. Because wow. we've never been there yet. 
And there was a person who was interested in my mother's ministry and asked her if she could come speak. So we're praying about going there and ministering mm-hmm. and traveling and sightseeing at I the same time. I need to pray time. about going with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. We have some friends over we in do. Africa, Wilkins too. We do. Wilkins and uh, there's, uh, Jessica. We, we have some, yeah, we have some, uh, some uh, faithful listeners over there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Namibia ministries that we helped out. Yep, church. Amen to that. Mm-hmm. I'll go with you, Miss Pat. Okay, I'll keep you posted. You betcha. We're you better. It. I'm going on that Israel cruise though with you. Yeah, you can come on that one too. <laughs> we'll just tear the place up. Yeah, we have a good time. time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it I'm was, talking about. It was amazing because some of the same. Cities and places that were mentioned in the Bible when we were in Israel, we saw the the same names still there. Mm -hmm. So it was like doing that, seeing, I think, where Peter lived and Ephesus, Turkey. Turkey, We went there, too. It was like it made the Bible become more real to me. Does that do something to you when you're standing in front of something like that? Yes. I bet it does. Yeah. It does. And it was like. It messed with you a little bit. Yeah. It was amazing because you got to actually see those places instead of just reading about them in the Bible. Right. Yeah. Francis Chan does this Bible study that Fritz and I were doing. um, On Mark? Yeah. On some other, um, with some other couples. And he is literally standing in the Jordan River, you know, and and it's um it's a guided book, but it also has videos to go with it. Wow. And so you see, you know, images of him standing mm-hmm. in the Jordan River and he's like, you can't help but be changed by right. just right. being in the very place yes. where you know Jesus I know, right? was baptized. I, I know. Yes. I want to walk where Jesus walked. You step That's into right. that river, man. It's That's on. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. I want to do that. I just want to dive in <laughs> head first. Uh-huh. Yeah. That might not be too smart because it's not really deep. Looked like it had a pretty good current it too. Did. Yeah. yeah, it really did. But yeah. man, that's amazing. Yes. Golly, I talked to you all night, Michelle. <laughs> you guys are just awesome. You're just a just a a bunch of joy. Thanks. Just yep. coming they here, smiling, yeah. and yeah. I'm sure laughing the listeners. And, I'm sure the listeners got will get something out of her testimony. Oh, there is no doubt. We're going to have to Absolutely. have her back for part two because we spent most of the time talking about her profession. But that's okay. <laughs> Maybe we were supposed to. That's right. Yes. Well, you know. You de- yeah, I know. It's, you know. You know, it's all, it's all about the Father at the yes, end of the is. day. And what he wants. Yep. Right. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. That was session 217. Well, if you've got a testimony, we want it. We'd like you to come here like Michelle did. But if you can't, you can write it and send it in to GodStoriesRadio at gmail.com. If you'd like to be a guest in the studio, which we hope you would, uh, send a note to GodStoriesRadio Tina at gmail.com. And what else can they do, Mikey? They can tweet us. They can tweet us on Twitter. And... uh like us on Facebook. And, and then, they can uh, call in their testimony as well. Yeah, you betcha. We can do Skype. We can uh, we can do a host of things. You can call in direct. We can make that make that work. We've had people call in from all over the world. Yes, we have. And it's great. It's wonderful. We've actually had people just write stints in their day, like an hour or two stint in a mm-hmm. day, because this is God stories. And mm-hmm. uh, we love your God stories. And uh, we just appreciate it. We appreciate everybody that listens and prays for us in all the different countries. And uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to switch gears here for just a second. My uh, sister texted just now. I'm glad I didn't turn the phone off. Huh? But uh, my niece, uh, well, you know Cam, my sister, mm-hmm. uh, Alex, and, uh, who we spent some time with. They had the newborn baby mm-hmm. we went out to dinner with. Well, she's having another baby, but it, it's on the way and it's kind of premature and she's having blood pressure issues is that preeclampsia uh she didn't say but they're going to induce her tomorrow Mm -hmm. so um they're going to try to get him moving tonight she said if not successful then inducing tomorrow so uh she actually said keep alex and zachary in your prayers and that's uh that's a big step for for cam to say that Mm. so i chimed in and i said we'll pray on gsr tonight we're doing the show right now my sister chris my sister my brother brother. excuse me chris uh says ditto what fritz said uh, yeah so 
anyway, if we could just take a second and uh, pray, M- Michelle, would you would you mind? I just feel like okay. Mm-hmm. And what's the names again? Um, Zachary, Alex, and Zachary. Maybe Zachary and and Alex is my niece's name, and uh, my sister is Cam or Claire, but we call her Cam. Okay. Okay, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. And we pray a special prayer for the family members just named, mm. Lord. We pray that you supply their need according to your riches and glory. And we pray you fix the condition. Is yes. it called Alex, the one that's got the condition? Alex, yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord. We pray that you bless her to have a healthy pregnancy, a yeah. healthy delivery. Yeah. Keep her safe, Lord. Keep the baby safe. And, yeah. and strengthen her family, Lord, as they're with her. Yeah rooting for her and going through this whole process with her. I pray you supply every need and bless everyone, Lord, to remain healthy. And we thank you that you are sending your healing power there right now in the name of Jesus. Even ease her mind, God, and fix everything that's wrong and make it right according to your will, according to your power and your purpose. And we thank you for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much. Fantastic. This has been great. I feel the Lord up in here. (laughs) We've got Miss Pat back there shouting us down. I'm glad I put a microphone on her. (laughs) I just love you guys. You you guys just have to come back uh, on a regular basis and fire us up. (laughs) But uh, me and Miss Pat, we're going cruising. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> we're going to go over there can to Africa and fire some people up. There you go. Hey, you got Amen. that right. Keep Miss Pat in prayer, Keep everyone. Miss Pat in prayer. She's bad on a little something, something, and he ain't going to get the victory. No nope. way. I read the book. I know who wins. Mm-hmm. Got yeah. that right. Yeah. All right. This is wonderful. Thank you again, Michelle, for coming. Thank, Thank you, you, Mama, Thank you, for coming. And uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you to all the listeners and supporters and people that pray for us. And, yes. and, uh, we uh, push the button, push the button because we got the new carpet and uh, thank you. And uh, we're back in back in business. And, you know, the Lord is so good that I had no water damage. I had a equipment on the floor. I had a computer, uh, a pretty major one on the floor and no water touched that. Wow! It was soaked. And all, that's a, that was a massive computer. It was too. soaked all around it. Wow. My, all my wiring, my cable was soaked, and uh, not not that's a miracle. Not a drop yes. on yes. that thing. Yes. Unbelievable, yes. Mm-hmm. you know. So yes. phew, praise the Lord. Praise God. Yes, yes, sir. Continue right. guys through his reign is what he's saying. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for session two seventeen. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike, and I'm Tina. God bless you guys. God bless. God bless. For what I treasure, and I make time for what I want. I choose my priorities, and Jesus, you're my number one. So I will make. So
Your.